Hey, I'm sorry the video is a little bit disorganized today. The weather is a little bit disorganized. <clears throat> I want to talk today on um, the movements in nature, the waxing and waning effects of nature on the cosmos. And it's kind of a heady subject, so I'm trying to keep it light. I have a little bag of goodies here to show you. But you know, yesterday I was listening to a, a person speaking on YouTube. He appeared to be a, a scientist. I'm not sure what discipline he was in. And he gave a very good talk, and I'll, I'll leave a link to his site. But at the very end, he said that he was really concerned because he felt like <clears throat> civilization was at, as he said, on a razor's edge and that he didn't know if science or religion was going to win or fundamentalism and <clears throat> rationality was going to win. And uh, I just wanted to comfort him and tell him that, you know, in my opinion, a subtle idea always displaces a crude one. And in the end, you know, uh, science will, will <clears throat> went out, rationality will, will went out uh, against irrationality. But, uh, so in this talk, I'm going to be talking about cosmic evolution, cosmology, astronomy, and bioevolution. Um, and this is only a talk for amongst the scientists. And so if you have a religious axe to grind and you want to respond to this video, don't bother, I won't post it. Uh, we're going we're talking about something a little bit different here. Um, I'm babysitting today, and um, you saw my, my granddaughter, <clears throat> you saw my puppy, you saw the bluebirds, and one species I can't identify, if anybody knows what that was on the little white feeder, it was blue, but it wasn't a bluebird. And I took a shot of the sun, the sky, it's so beautiful today, the front's coming through, and it's blue and white clouds, and this beautiful old 200 year tree here. And this is my favorite spot. <clears throat> this is called a white oak tree. About half a mile in this direction, my great-great-grandfather had a farm back <clears throat> in the 1850s. Beyond that on the river, my great-great-great-grandfather had a ferry on Johnson's Ferry Road. And my grandfather had a farm of maybe a quarter mile over this hill just past the grammar school where I went to school. And uh, <clears throat> that's where I was raised and grew up in a very natural setting around the lakes and the stream. And I had a lot of time to think and see nature. It was wonderful. I've been around the world and apparently I'm back, huh? So this thing about the Big Bang, everything seems to be coming from a come point. This point is a theoretical point that we can't really describe. Maybe maybe it's uh, infinity might be a description of it. Uh, you know, he doesn't have a long gray beard like me, <laughs> but it, it's it's so we can't you know it's beyond us. <clears throat> but there's another there's another aspect of it which we could call nature. And uh, nature, I wouldn't say. Could we say that nature has been set into motion, or nature is affecting, affecting the vast movement of particles and energy in, in a certain way? Well, that's, that's what I'm proposing here, that in the first stage of Big Bang, up until we reach a state of, say, granite, that there is a a waxing influence or binding influence upon the energy and matter, uh, particularly bringing it into closer proximity in stapler forms. And, you know, filling up the periodic table, of course, you have to have the crushing of stars to do that. I'm not going to get into cosmology, we all know it. And in biology, there is a movement where <clears throat> possibly there becomes a waning or lessening of, its, of an influence of binding on this energy matter, which possibly it might be a state in which, say, there is a tremendous amount of pressure to bind it further, 
and something could happen. For instance, uh, uh, there could be an explosion, supernova. But on a micro level, something could happen in which actually mind is born out of matter. Uh, and it becomes a march then of what we call organic chemistry. Um, and eventually, single cell bacteria, and from there, it goes on. But uh, let's look at some of this stuff. Now, I, had, I was painting the camera straight up when we started. And beyond, beyond the sky, looking into deep, deep space with the Hubble telescope, looking back 40 billion years, you know, we, could, we, we start to see a, you know, a haze where things are starting to come together. But right here, you know, I'm sitting on probably at least a foot or two of uh, decayed uh, organic matter from the leaves that have been falling off these trees. And, uh, you know, we're, we're only about we're only about a mile and a half for Dobbins Air Force Base. And a uh, Black Hawk helicopter just flew over. They're going to go get some, uh, they're going to go get some of those uh, fundamentalists uh, over there. Our fundamentalist guy up in Washington sending these. Uh, it's crazy. Okay, but let's just deal with the world as we know it, okay? Not the fantasy world that's, that's causing us a lot of problems with raising our taxes. Now, when, when there is a crucifixion, when, the, when, this, when, the, when there is this, I'm going to call it a waxing, when there is this waxing effect.